Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. It's 1991. Princess Diana is heading to Sandringham for three days over Christmas with the royal family. Her relationship with the Prince of Wales has become really strained and she's aware of the Prince's relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. She's counting the days until she leaves. Of course, I'm talking about Spencer, the movie. Have you seen it yet? I hope you watch it before you listen to my review here because I don't want to spoil it for you. It was an incredible movie and some of it was true, some of it wasn't. But what was really real and what was really made up, I can tell you because, well, I was there and in the movie. <laughs> it was really weird seeing Princess Diana, played by Christine Stewart, saying hello Darren in the opening scenes uh, to Sean Harris, who was playing me in the movie. It was really weird. I, I, I got goosebumps. I mean, Christine Stewart, her accent was was just spot on. And for just a few minutes, I it took me back there. I really imagined it was Princess Diana saying, hello, Darren. The movie begins with a title card reading a fable from a true tragedy. And so we can't be too harsh on the movie for, you know, what is obviously made up. And although I had uh, no input to the movie, no connection whatsoever. Uh, it's obvious that um, the screenwriters had uh, taken some sort of newspaper clippings, interviews that I'd done um, and sort of incorporated them into the movie. We then see Princess Diana, played by Christine Stewart. She was, really was amazing in this role, by the way. Just driving to Sandringham and, and she's lost. I fear that was a metaphor from the screenwriter about her life, really. She bumps into Chef Darren in a Porsche, well, not literally, and I, I, I don't, actually I don't think she even had a Porsche. She, she used to drive a Mercedes. I remember when she got her first Mercedes and one of the teams said to her, uh, Your Royal Highness, a German car for a British princess. Quick as a flash, she said. Well, they're a lot more reliable than German husbands. She was so quick-witted, the princess. Of course, me meeting her then didn't happen. I once shared a story in the media about Princess Diana bumping into me uh, when I was walking my two German shepherds in the park, in the home park at Windsor Castle. She was on her way up to, to the castle to see the queen and she saw me and stopped. And just as we were chatting, one of my German shepherds jumped up at her door. Oh my gosh, she nearly messed herself, the poor princess. When I got up to the castle later, she told the Queen's page that one of Darren's dogs tried to savage me in the grounds of the park. <laughs> oh, and she never did say to me, will they kill me? Though she did say to me once at Kensington Palace when she asked me to fill up a car with gas, watch the brakes. I think someone's been tampering with them. She said that with a wry laugh. <laughs> oh, and Chef Darren calling her Diana in the movie. Never. I respected her title too much for that. I always called her Your Royal Highness. Uh, but, you know, Sean Harris, I think he was incredible playing the part of Chef Darren. Great job, Sean. <laughs> I think I smiled more than he did, though. <laughs> and the scarecrow and a father's coat. It didn't happen. I think that was a metaphor. You know, happy times. Playing with her brothers and sisters at Park House and the Sandringham Estate where she grew up. The bulimia, it did happen. That was an understatement. The princess was struggling. The movie's painstakingly rich in detail, emotion and impression, but I do think they exaggerated her mental state a lot. I mean, for artistic license, I, I guess, but I don't want people to come away thinking that the royal family just didn't care at all. I mean. The dining room was right next to the kitchen, in real life, at Sandringham. And I often could hear the princess laughing out loud. She had this infectious laughter. And I, I don't want people to come away thinking the, the royal family were cold in this. They weren't. There were lots and lots of happy times there. But, you know, as I said, it's 
Part of this film's made up. It's a fable, a lot of it's untrue. Spencer was filmed at Nordkirchen Castle in Germany, and it's way bigger than Sandringham. One of the biggest problems with Sandringham is it's the smallest of all the royal residences, but it's homely. But when all the family and all the staff gather there, it really does get claustrophobic. The food arriving at Sandringham with the military trucks and all of the soldiers unloading it into the kitchen, partly true, uh, but we used to get most of our food from the local purveyors in Norfolk. But the army was used to transport all of our kitchen equipment there, everything from pots and pans to whisks and ladles and spoons. The Sandringham kitchen was an empty shell when we arrived. We just had to travel everything. Did they get the royal food right for Christmas? Well, in the movie, they show enough food to feed a whole cruise ship. Um, we only had five chefs at Sandringham. We'd have been working through the night to get that amount of food done. Take a look at the original royal Christmas menus. Everyone weighing themselves on scales when they arrived and left. Timothy Spall playing Major Alistair Gregory, the Queen Mother's equerry. Boy, is he scary. If he'd have been there in real life, he'd have scared the bejeebus out of me. <sighs> Thankfully, that part wasn't true. <laughs> the royal family are German by descent and so follow the tradition of opening gifts on Christmas Eve, not on Christmas morning, uh, like sort of the rest of the country. Sandringham was actually my favourite of all the royal residences, despite this Christmas. Um, you know, the princess all through the movie was going on about how cold it was at Sandringham. Um, you know, maybe that was maybe that was another metaphor in the movie. It's always cold when I'm here. The princess's obsession with Park House, where she grew up, it was now in the movie boarded up. Maybe another metaphor. You know, you you can't go back. You can't go back. In real life, during this time frame, Park House was actually a hotel for people with disabilities. Back to the kitchen, crepe souffle d'abrico. It was a favorite pudding, it really was. And I say pudding because dessert means fresh fruit to the royal family. I remember suggesting it to the queen for lunch when the princess was there. I had to give her two choices in the menu book. So I suggested another pudding that the queen didn't like. That way I was pretty sure that the queen would choose the crepe souffle d'abrico and it worked every time. So the princess got her crepe souffle when she came to visit the Queen. When the platter came back from the royal dining room to the kitchen, I had to fight off all the other chefs from digging in and I put it into the warmer and wait. And I knew the princess would come down to the kitchen for seconds. She was too scared to ask for seconds in front of the Queen. She'd come down and she'd just sit on the table in the kitchen. The kitchen worked off. And she'd be just eating away at this crepe souffle d'abrico. I should be talking about Phantom of the Opera, Les Miserables. Um, they were fun times. And I'll share the recipe for the crepe souffle d'abrico in a future video and the recipe too, so that you can actually uh, make it and enjoy it as well. When the princess asked Chef Darren what happens to the pheasants, it's true, the guests are given a brace before leaving, but the pheasants are never thrown away. The game's never wasted on the royal grounds. The pheasants are served at the royal table and any leftovers are actually sent back to Buckingham Palace and frozen and used throughout the year. I thought it was sweet. You know that scene where she was walking in the grounds and she stopped and she sat talking to the pheasant. She used to love going out, walking the grounds in the park and I remember bumping into her one day and she got a Sonny Walkman on the headphones and uh, I, I, she stopped to chat and I asked her what she was listening to and she said William and Harry had bought her the, the new Phil Collins tape. And I said, oh, I love Phil Collins. Um, what's your favorite track on this one? <laughs> I remember her saying, another day in paradise, Darren, another day in paradise. <laughs> uh, humor killed me. She came to the kitchen a lot to eat and um, I was, I was in there and um, I remember one time she came down for some bread and butter pudding and uh, the yeoman of the silver pantry uh, always used to come through and uh, he, one day he said, um, oh, Queen Diana. And I remember her saying, Victor, please don't say that. I'll never be queen. Those words stuck with me. 
Anne Boleyn. Um, obviously not true. Um, but there, there were ghosts at Sandringham, especially in the old library, when the pearls fall in a soup at the royal dining table and she starts eating them. No, of course that didn't happen. How close did they get the royal table though? Take a look. Prince Charles insisting that they sew the drapes, the curtains together, uh, so that the photographers couldn't take pictures in. The photographers got nowhere near the castle, so obviously not true. Sewing the drapes together, no, that didn't happen. I think that's another metaphor. I think that, you know, the princess, you know, to, to get the wire cutters and cut through that, open it up and <sighs> claustrophobic. I think that was the metaphor. She came into the kitchen one afternoon and told me that she was in trouble. She decided that she just needed to get away, get to the beach. She did drive out to the beach. That part was true, but Maggie, there wasn't a Maggie in real life there. But she went out there on her own. She just walked along the beach and just let all the cobwebs blow away in the wind. And she said, I got into trouble for not telling anyone where I was going. Princess Diana dancing. Oh, wasn't that sweet, that part? Oh my gosh. She loved dancing. She really loved dancing. Um, I, I danced with her so many times at Balmoral for Gillies Ball and, and, and even the Christmas Ball at Buckingham Palace. Messing with the boys, jumping on those black squares. Oh, that was one of my favorite parts. And uh, playing games with the boys too. Um, Private Harry, what's your favorite part of Christmas? That's so Princess Diana and Christine Stewart absolutely nailed that part. At the end, at the end of the movie, when Princess Diana disrupts the pheasant shoot to take away her boys, that didn't happen. That would never happen. She did once say to me, shooting, I don't understand why this family have a passion for killing animals. I remember when she went stalking, shot her first deer. She came to me that afternoon in the kitchen and said, Darren, I did it, I shot a stag, but can you tell me when it's gonna be on the menu? I can't bear the thought of eating it. I'll just pretend I'm sick or something and stay up in my room. But taking the boys away from Sandringham, you know, that part when she races off in the Porsche and they're singing in the car. Oh, contraire, that did not happen. That would never happen. The princess had too much respect for the queen. And in fact, when I moved across to work for her, when I was her chef at Kensington, she, as part of the separation, um, was supposed to have the boys every other Christmas. But she always insisted that they spend Christmas at Sandringham with the Queen because that was the royal thing to do. Spoiler alert, at the end when she's racing along in the porch singing away and she takes the boys to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, of course, happy times. Everyone was happy there. She was with her boys. Um, Half-truths. Uh, she didn't take them to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, she actually did take them to McDonald's. She came into the kitchen once at Kensington Palace. Uh, and said, Darren, cancel lunch today. I'm taking the boys to McDonald's. And I said, Your Royal Highness, McDonald's? I can cook burgers better than McDonald's. She said, Oh, it's okay. They're going there for the toys. They want the toys. The boys are loving those happy meals right now. So, did I enjoy the movie? It's beautifully shot, and Kristen Stewart was amazing as the princess with her mannerisms and her voice. And the music by Johnny Greenwood. It had me on the edge of my seat. The bulimia and self-destruction scenes, they brought a lump to my throat. Painful memories, you know, watching, watching what, what I really actually saw in real life happen. And, you know, but the happy scenes, the happy scenes of her with the boys, I mean, it was like a coming alive again. I mean, for real, Kristen Stewart played an amazing part. I didn't realize Till I watched the movie how much you know I, I actually missed the princess and I didn't want the movie to end maybe that's another metaphor hope you've enjoyed my review my memories of the princess uh, it's been fun sharing it with you um, if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button give me a thumbs up Leave your comments below. We've got the 200,000 subscribers coming up soon, so we're doing a Q&A. So leave your questions there too.
and we'll see you again soon.